Hello, welcome to this video. I'm Dustin from SWPA team. In this video, we will talk about some common function blocks, explain how they work and how to use them. As you know, there are large numbers of function blocks in guide, including input, filter, output, J1939, port manager, and so on. In this video, we will introduce several common function blocks like sensor3pt, profile6pt, soft ramp, PWM driver, and the controller PID. Let's start with sensor 3PT. The function of this block is to convert an original input signal to a percentage value between minus 100% and positive 100% according to the characteristic of input devices. This function block is often used for joysticks and steering. In this slide, let's have a look on the pins. Checkpoint. Checkpoint is used for activating checkpoints with namespace inside block. 40 percent. 40 stand for the threshold value of fault. Reference date is calibration area between high calibration point and low calibration point. Calibration. There are high, middle, and low calibration points. The corresponding output of a high calibration point is positive 100 percent. Middle is zero. Low is minus 100 percent. Data band. High and low data band and middle data band. The purpose of data band is to explain the range where output stay at 100 percent, minus 100 percent, and zero. Sensor power. Reference value of input signal, generally set as supply voltage of input device. Input. Signal from input device. Let's see how this block works. Assume the configuration and showing slider. 40% is 500. Data band percent is 0. High, low, and middle calibration point is 9000, 5000, and 1000. Sensor power is 5000. Unit of these power meters is 0.01%. So we can take 0 0.9, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1 into formulas. These formulas can be found in user menu. After calculating, we can get the high point 4500, middle point 2500, low point is 500. Error of input too high happens when input exceeds 4700. Error of input too low happens when input is below 300. Then we can get the trace according to the calculation result. We can find the trace. When input is at 2500, the output is 0. When input is lower than 500, output remains at minus 10,000. When input is greater than 4500, output remains at 10,000. And the four points are 300 and 4700. Now we set the data band to 1000 and take it into formulas again. We can get the calculation result. High point is 4100. Middle area range from 2300 to 2700. Low point is 900. Let's check the trace again. Compare with previous trace. There are three data band areas after setting data band to 1000. When input is between 2300 and 2700, output is 0. When input is below 900, output is minus 10,000. And when input is above 4,100, output is 10,000. Let's look at the output pins of function block sensor 3PT. When power meters are out of range, we can read a binary date when 0, 0, 0 in steady pin. When the input is too low or too high, we can read a binary date 0, 0, 0, 1 or 0, 0, 1, 0 in the fourth pin. In this slide, we will look at the function block soft ramp. It's not difficult to find the function of this block is to change the slope of signals. Make them smooth, commonly used for slowing down and soft starting in devices. Let's look at the configuration. Split. This power meter determines how to handle the situation when direction changes. Let's look at the trace. If split is true, output soft end to zero then soft start in another direction. If the split is false, there will not be soft end and soft start. 
the real time. This power meter determines the time speed remains at zero when direction changes. We set it 500 milliseconds here. Maximum and minimum are the limit value of output signal. Soft start and soft end range from 0 to 10,000, means 0 to 100%. Stand for the proportion of soft start and soft end to increase and decrease time. As shown in the presentation, set soft start and soft end to 2,500, then soft start time should be 375 milliseconds and the soft end time should be 250 milliseconds. Range. Range is the amount output changes in the decrease or increase time. For example, range is set to 10,000. Increase time is set to 1,500 milliseconds. And decrease time is set to 1,000 milliseconds. So it takes 1.5 seconds for output to increase from 0 to 10,000. And 1 second for output to decrease from 10,000 to 0. There are also output pins of status and fault on this function block. We can read the binary date 1000 in the status pin when parameters configuration is incorrect. Same, we can read the binary date 0001 or 0010 when input too low or too high. Let's look at the next function block, profile6pt. Six pairs of XY parameters create a seven segment profile that defines how the function block's output follow to its input value. When setting parameters, it's important to know that the X parameters should be increased in sequence. Next function block, let's take a look at the PWM driver. This is an output function block. It converts data from 0 to 10,000 into desired current, voltage, duty, or other output signals. Max is the maximum output value when input value is 10,000. And start is the minimum output value when input value is 1. The range of output is from 0 to 30,000. So we should configure max and start according to the specific output type. And showing the presentation, the first block is used for current out. Its output range should be from 50 to 120 mA. Second block is used for duty out. Its output range should be from 30 to 80% because different output type has different units. Let's have a look at the controller PID function block. With this function block, movement process can be well controlled. This function block is used in projects with functions of constant speed control, cruise control, or straight tracking. Before we move on to this function block, let's briefly review the basic knowledge of PID controller. PID stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. Controller input is error signal and output is given to the process. Output signal of controller is trying to achieve desired value. PID controller is a closed loop system with feedback. It compares feedback value with set point and generates an error signal. And according to the error signal, it adjusts the output of system. This process continues until this error gets to zero or feedback value becomes equal to set point. Following in the formulas of PID controller, in this formulas, ET is the error signal, which is the difference between set point and feedback. KP is the proportional gain factor. P controller is proportional to the actual value of error. If error is large, controller output is also large. And if the error is small, controller output is also small. Ki is the integral gain factor. I controller is integrated to the actual value of error. Because of integration, small error could result in high integral response. Kd is the derivative gain factor. Output of derivative controller is directly proportional to the rate of error changing. Let's see how to understand PID controller in digital system. Take T and the sampling period, and K and the sampling index. So time T can be replaced by KT. Then use sum to replace the integral. Use increment divide time to replace derivative. Then we can get the following equation approximately. We can get the following equation after simplify. KP is the proportional gain factor. 
here i the integral k factor kd is the derivative k factor let's go back to guide it should be easy to understand the configuration now in guide one scan circle is one sampling period error is the deviation between set point and feedback we can get the following equation after simplify kp is the proportional gain factor ki is the integral k factor kd is the derivative k factor here is a simple exam of PRD controller, show how to use it in program. Set point connects to our reference command. Feedback connects to signal from speed sensor. Remember to convert set point and feedback to have the same unit. Then add PRD output to set point and limit it. For more information on Plus One software, please remember to visit our forum or help desk. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see our latest video releases. Thank you for listening.